Hi everybody, in today's blog I wanted to make something a really quick video for you guys to understand some of the things that I've learned in how to manage myself going through the experience of running a fast growth startup. Now this is actually a big thing for entrepreneurs. In the, in the case where you've got so many different responsibilities, you're often the first start, you're the first person in the company, maybe you have one or two staff members. How do you manage yourself when there's just so much to do? You know, somebody needs to pay the bills, somebody needs to go talk to the accountants, somebody needs to find new ways to get customers, somebody has to sell this thing, somebody has to talk to the developers. There's just so much stuff to do and it seems like every day you only get a fraction of your to-do list done. So in this video, I wanted to share with you guys five different ways which I had found that really helped my productivity, four of which are going to be immediately actionable. You can actually go and do these starting from, you know, half an hour after this video is finished. The other one is actually more long term, which I actually personally think is the most important time management hack. So the first, the first thing I'll say is that you really need to get good at managing yourself in 90 minute cycles. And, and part of that is you focus on one thing for 90 minutes. You don't keep going on and trying to do 30 different things, you break your tasks up into 90 minute cycles. Now, how do, you, how do you do that without getting distracted? Well, studies show that on average 23 minutes is the amount of time you lose when you go off track. So let's say that I'm, I'm writing a, uh, a white paper or I'm on the phone doing some cold calling to some prospects to see if there's interest in working with my software. You know, I'm doing a task uh, towards a project. And uh, basically, I just check Facebook, and then I get distracted, and I maybe check YouTube. On average, it takes 23 minutes to get back on track once you've lost focus. So one of the tools that I use, and if you use a Mac, this is really helpful, is an app called Self Control. Basically, you select the websites you commonly uh, get distracted on, you put them on your blacklist, you click start, and at a root level, it blocks you out. So there's actually no way that I know of that you can actually get these uh, get back on Facebook or get on YouTube or whatever sites that you've blocked. This is really useful um, when you just really need to just get into something, perhaps you're not feeling super productive, you just need to turn on self-control and just go for it. I love to hear a lot of entrepreneurs say, I'm giving up Facebook, I'm giving up YouTube. And I, I don't think that you really necessarily should give up social media as an entrepreneur um, that's constantly trying to engage with all their audience. I think that you really just need to be able to control yourself from distractions, and this is a really important thing. Also, put yourself in an environment where you can focus. I mean, put headphones in if you're in a collaborative space. You know, perhaps lock yourself away in a room if you just need to get something done. But eliminating distractions, being focused on one clearly defined task, is really important. And we'll talk a bit later in this presentation about the difference between tasks and projects. The second uh, most important thing I think is that you really need to think about what you're letting your staff, your team members, your customers, how you're letting them interact with you. Because this comes back to focus. I mean, I used to find that, you know, between the hours of 9 to 6 p.m., I was constantly reactive versus uh, strategically using my time. Someone would come up to me and say, oh, there's a customer on the phone, Mark, who wants to talk to you. Oh, there's a, a PR opportunity. You can go speak to this uh, journalist. Or, hey, Mark, what do I do with this project? The client wants this or this or this. And um, by the time that you've gone through that and you've lost your 23 minutes just dealing with that um, in, in distraction and getting back and focused, it's really you find that you've got done virtually no meaningful work by the end of the day. And you almost have to start a second day which usually for me starts at about 6 or 7 o'clock after the gym, and then I'll work you know, till 1 or 2 a.m. in the morning just to actually get the important stuff done. So what we kind of did at Apps to, to deal with this is we implemented, uh, we killed the got a minute. So people going up to staff and being like, do you have a minute? I just need to talk to you about something. And we actually set up strategic times where issues can be raised and discussed. For instance, every morning we have a stand-up with all our staff where they get together and they say, what have I worked on today? What have I what, what what sorry, what did I work on yesterday? What did I work on today? And is anything holding me up? And if anything is holding them up, then that issue they can talk about it offline. That's a really good way to flag the issues as they come up on a daily basis. Because you'll often find that you as a as a leader in your organization, you're actually a bottleneck on so much different stuff. And if you deal with it, you know, one on one just like that, you never get it done. And staff are really happy when you just have this uh, Discipline meeting schedule. The other thing I would say is you've got to really learn um, a really great man, um, time management philosophy that's used by you know, millions and millions of high performance called Getting Things Done by David Allen. It's a great book. You can buy it for $13 on Amazon or at any real local bookstore. And basically, 
I also use things, and as you can see here, um, along the side I've blurred out uh, this for confidentiality reasons, but I have a bunch of projects. Each one of those projects actually has a subset of tasks that I need to achieve. Um, I've got all of those logs, you can see the things that I've done, um, in this case setting up a business partnership deed for a uh, client relationship, um, basically working with the trust lawyers, working with um, other lawyers, and um, you know, certain clauses, etc., that need to get added. And I've got certain tasks that all can be done within a 90 minute period. I define a project as something that you're not going to get done if you just put on a to do list. The problem with traditional to do lists is that you either, number one, you have to put a project on there, so it's something that will take three or four weeks, and you have to write that as an item on your to do list. Or that if you do one item, that might get you a little step closer, but then you have to remember what all the other items are for that project. For instance, let's say I'm writing a book. And I write, write a chapter, and then I never really plan for the next steps of that project, so therefore my to-do list is pretty irrelevant. So my advice is I don't have that much time to go through the entire philosophy there, but get the copy of the book, Getting Things Done, because it's a really great insight in how to really manage yourself. Now, this is uh, another really interesting one, which I actually heard about from Richard Branson, um, the founder of Virgin Group. Basically, he was asked, what is the number one most productive number one productivity tip you have for entrepreneurs and people trying to get more done. And everyone thought he was going to say something fancy like, oh, this to-do list method or, you know, have the right management team. But what he actually said is the he actually gets two times more stuff done if he works out. So, I mean, I, I was never a super active person growing up. But what I really learned is that if I worked out every single day, um, that made a massive difference in my focus, my concentration, and my ability to deal with frustrations and, and problems that previously would be like, oh man, this is too much to deal with right now. You'd have that mental clarity which allowed you to make decisions much quicker, and you'd also tend to get more stuff done because you're more focused. So I'd really recommend um, trying to find some time to work out or just get out of the office and actually do some physical exercise because... Uh, as much as I was initially skeptical of all the tri people that tried to push this on me, eventually after trying it and doing it on a daily basis, you actually get massive results from it. Now, the final point is one which is a little bit more long term. So this perhaps may not be something that you can utilize straight away to get productivity. But Steve Jobs um, actually talked a lot about why Apple was such an effective company. And I think this is really something that can apply to any startup. And he said that the reason most projects fail and the reason most software doesn't work and products don't get shipped on time, etc., is because of lack of trust. And what's interesting about that is that let's say that we're writing some code together and we're both developers and you're dependent on me in order to get your part of the project done. I'm a dependency on whether your module is going to work. But you've never worked with me before. You know I'm flaky. I don't really have a good reputation for delivering things on time you get really frustrated and the whole time you can't even think about doing quality work because you know that I'm just going to mess around, you know I'm out, you know, out drinking and partying while you're at home coding and making this thing actually happen. Basically what, what Steve said was that you can't really trust, you can't really get stuff done if you're so busy worrying about if the other guy is going to come through on his promises. And that's why on a company level it's really important that you work on building a culture of trust where the teams know each other, you remove low performers, and you actually build a, a company culture that's built around development teams and you know even more generally your business teams all working together that trust each other, that deliver results and hold accountable for that. If you really want a productive organization beyond you, ultimately you cannot be the only productive person. And if you look at truly productive organizations as a group as opposed to an individual, what they all have in common is they have trust and trust with between themselves, trust with vendors, trust with a lot of people. Trust is the ultimate thing you need in an organization to be effective. Otherwise, people just freak out and get frustrated because they can't get stuff done because they're depending on other people. And perhaps in other blog posts, I'll talk about how to build that culture of trust within a startup, how to really do that within your initial team and set the catalyst for the rest of the organization. But I just want you to flag that as a really important thing that you need to be looking at from day one. So there you have it. You know, the first thing I would say is make sure that you focus your time in 90 minute chunks. That's what the book Powerful Engagement is all about. I highly recommend you read it. I'll also have a link on this blog post to the software I use 
to actually block myself out and make sure I'm really focused. The second thing is make sure you have a disciplined meeting schedule where you have some sort of daily stand-up, even if you're a team of two, just to make sure things are getting done and everyone's on the same page. Number three, learn getting things done. That book was amazing. I mean, millions of people swear by it, and it's, it's the ultimate productivity system for a knowledge worker, someone that's like using their brain as opposed to physically moving things, which is a whole old school of time management. And of course, work out, you know, find some time to do some physical exercise, whether that's walking, running, you know, just get out of the office and actually try and do something because the clarity you get is incredible. And finally, like I just said, make sure you work on building a culture of trust where people can depend on other people. It's very transparent, it's very accountable. And in other videos, we'll talk about this more.